Welcome to Electron Online. So let's try another one of those non-regular. It's neither a series or a parallel type of circuit. It's a combination of the two. So it's nothing like a little extra practice to try to learn how this works. So here we have the circuit. We have a voltage supply that provides 7 volts, but it starts at time equals zero. We have a resistor and an inductor in series, and now we have a resistor and an inductor in parallel. Notice that we have loop 1, mesh 1 with current I1 and mesh 2 with current I2 and the voltage across this resistor, the 1 ohm resistor. Notice how we have plus and minus here so that we keep that in mind and make sure that I got that copied correctly and yeah, alright, so make sure that matches my notes. Okay, what we're supposed to find is we're supposed to find I1, I2 and the voltage across the resistor. How do we do that? Well, first, let's see what our initial conditions are. When at time equals zero, we have seven volts that's applied to the circuit, but we have an inductor here that provides any current from flowing through the circuit at time equals zero. So essentially, there's zero current at that moment, and therefore, there will be zero voltage across this resistor and zero voltage across that resistor. So it looks like everything is zero at time equals zero. So what we do next is, what would it be at final steady state. At final steady state, this is like a short circuit, this is like a short circuit, so that means that all the current will fl flow through the outside loop, it will not flow to this, through this resistor, so essentially the current will be the voltage applied divided by this resistor. So we can say that for both I1 and I2, steady state, will be the voltage supply divided by this resistor because there's no resistance to I2 here because there's no current flowing through this, only through the inductor which offers no opposition to the current. So we can say that I1 steady state equals I2 steady state which is equal to 7 volts divided by 3 ohms which is 7 over 3 amps. So that's a steady state current in both the first and the second mesh. All right. So what next, what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that there is nothing here. We're going to remove the voltage source altogether to find the transient equations. So to find the transient equations. We're now going to set up two KVLs. Kirchhoff voltage loop for loop 1 and for loop 2. So let's go KVL1. And we're going to go around the circuit and notice of course that the voltage source is not there. So the voltage drop across the resistor will be 3 times I1 and the voltage drop across the inductor well that would be uh, it would be a minus of course it's a voltage drop minus the voltage drop across the inductor which is L times the, uh, the I1 dt and then the voltage drop across here that would be um, uh, minus 1 times I1 because according to I1 this is a voltage drop but we go in the opposite direction of I2 so that would be plus 1 times I2 because we have a voltage rise due to I2 and then we get back to zero. All right we can clean it up a little bit because we have a minus 3 and a minus 1 and uh, let's see, we can move everything over to one side so we can write this as I2 is equal to 4I1 plus L. Now L, which L are we talking about? We're talking about this L right here. So it would be 0 0.5 times DI1 DT. So there's our first equation from our first mesh. But notice we both have an I2 and an I1 in here. So we're going to have to solve some equations simultaneously to get rid of that I2. Let's do KVL2. So now we're going to move across, around this loop right here. We go across from here to here. here. That's a voltage drop across this resistor for I2. So that would be a minus 1 times I2. But it's a voltage rise relative to I1. So it would be plus 1 times I1. And then we come across this inductor right here, and so we have a voltage drop. It would be a minus L, and this, so let's call this L1. Let's call this L2 because it's this inductor right here. Uh, minus L2 times DI2 dt. 
and that adds up to zero as we go all the way around the loop so we have all the voltages accounted for so what we can do here is we can probably solve that one for i1 so let's do that so here we have i1 hmm yes i1 uh, is equal to i2 plus l2 l2 is 0 0.2 so that would be 0 0.2 di2 dt so now we have a second equation and now we need to solve these equations simultaneously so we have i2 in in terms of i1 so we could replace this i2 in here by this i1 i2 I so you can take this and move it in here but now we also have a di2 dt so we have to take the derivative of this so di2 dt is equal to the derivative of this which is four times di1 dt plus 0 0.5 times the derivative of this which is the second derivative of i1 with respect to time like this okay now what we could do is we could have this i2 replaced by this and this di dt oh, uh, yeah this di dt right here replaced by this and now we have an equation with only i1s in there all right let's do that so we have i1 equals i2 and i2 is right here so it would be 4i1 plus a half di1 dt plus one fifth times this so that would be four times one fifth which is four fifths so that would be four fifths times di1 dt and a half times a fifth that's one half times a fifth that would be one tenth all right so it would be plus one tenth oh no 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 oh, okay all right it's i'm not multiplying i am the five well let's see here it's uh the idt four times this okay so we have one fifth oh, i'm gonna write this as one fifth there we go that's my problem one fifth times four gives me four fifths and one fifth times one half i'm going to write this as one half one fifth is one tenth times the second derivative right here second derivative of i1 with respect to time all right so it goes dit is equal to this so it's one fifth times all of this one fifth times this gives me that all right now i'm good i probably want to combine a few of these so i can say that i1 is equal to oh let's see now i'm going to move everything over to one side let's try that I'm going to subtract this from that so we have zero is equal to three i1 we have a half plus four fifths that would be five halves a uh, five fifths plus four fifths which is nine fifths so plus nine oh, 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 oh. four fifths is eight tenths plus five tenths that's thirteen tenths there we go thirteen tenths times di1 dt sometimes you trip over the simple arithmetic all right so the common denominator is ten so that's five tenths plus eight tenths is thirteen tenths di1 dt and we have plus one tenth di the second derivative of i1 dt okay so now what we should do is we should multiply everything by ten to get rid of this coefficient in front of that so we move multiply everything by 10 like this and then we rearrange order so we have 0 is equal to the second derivative of the current in the mesh one okay multiply this times 10 we get plus 13 times the first derivative with respect to time and plus 30i and now we have our differential equation for mesh one and of course now what we need to do is solve for that differential equation so we can solve for the current as a function of time so the characteristic equation is as follows we have 0 equals s squared plus 13s plus 30 
Hmm. It looks like we can factor that. 0 is equal to s plus 10 and s plus 3. Of course, when we do that, we don't get our alpha and our omega, so we'll do that in just a moment, but at least what we can see here, that if s1 is equal to negative 3 and s2 is equal to negative 10, at least we have our s1 and s2. But if we also write it in the quadratic equation format, we get minus 13 plus or minus the square root of 13 squared, which is 169, minus 4 times a times c. And that would be 4 times 1 times 30, that would be 120. So this, and all divided by 2. So that means that this would be equal to minus 13 divided by 2, plus or minus 169 minus 120 is 49, the square root is 7, so plus or minus 7 over 2. Which means, again, that would be minus 6 and a half, minus 3 and a half, which is minus 10. And when you add it, it's minus 3. So that gives us our two results. However, what we need to do is we need to find alpha out of that equation. So what we can say is that our alpha is equal to minus 13 divided by 2. And our omega sub naught would be equal to um, 120 divided by 4, 120 divided by 4, which is 30, and that would be the square root of 30. The square root of 30, omega sub naught, um, that would be the square root of 30, because this is omega sub naught squared. If I take the 2 squared, move it in here, I get 120 divided by 4, which is 30, and that would be omega sub naught squared, so omega sub naught is the square root of 30. Take the square root of 30, and you get 5.477. Let me try it again. 30, take the square root. Yeah, 5.477. So this is equal to 5.477. I have the minus from over here, but of course that's minus alpha, and omega would also be a positive number. So this is equal to 6.5, and this is equal to 5.477. And since alpha is larger than omega sub naught, we can then determine that this, by definition, is an overdamped case. And since it's overdamped, we come up with the general equation. We can then say that the, where are we here? That the current, I, as a function of time, is equal to A times E to the minus S1, which is minus 3, T plus B E to the minus 10 T plus, what is the steady state current for I1? That's 7 over 3. So now we have our general equation for I1. Of course, we still need to find the values for A and B. All right, so now that we have the general equation for the current in mesh 1, we now need to solve for A and B. So we start out by setting the time equal to 0. So the current, when time is equal to 0, is equal to, of course, this goes to 1, that goes to 1. We simply get A plus B and the constant plus 7 over 3. All right, and that, of course, is equal to what? What is the current at time equals zero? Well, notice that when the source turns on at time equals zero, the inductor will prevent any current from flowing initially, so I initial must equal zero. Okay, so there's our first equation for A and B. Now we need a second equation, and for that, we need to take the derivative of this. So the derivative, d, I1 with respect to time is equal to minus 3a e to the minus 3t and minus 10b e to the minus 10t and of course the derivative of the constant goes to zero. But what is the derivative of I1 with respect to t equal to when time equals zero? Well for that we're going to employ the concept for the inductor. We know that the voltage across the inductor is equal to L times di dt, which means that di dt in mesh 1 is going to be equal to the voltage across the inductor 1 divided by the inductance. And of course, what is that voltage when time equals 0? Well, notice when time equals 0 and the source turns on, immediately there is not going to be any current, but 
all of the voltage will drop across this inductor because it is opposing the changing current. There's no current flowing through over here because it gets stopped by this inductor, which means that the IDT, when time equals zero, is going to be the voltage across the inductor, which is 7 volts, divided by the inductance, and the inductance is 0.5. So that means that the IDT, when time is equal to 0, is equal to 7 volts divided by the inductance 0 0.5, which is 14, and now which is equal to this set to 0, which is minus 3A, minus 10B, which gives us our next equation, so we can solve for A and B. So now we have these two equations. All right. So it looks like if I multiply this equation by 3, both sides by 3, I can then say that, well, let's see, move this across. So we have 3a plus 3b. And if I multiply this times 3, it gets 7, but I have to move to the other side, it becomes minus 7. So minus 7 equals 3a plus 3b. Again, multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3, and multiply this by 3, and multiply this by 3, multiply every term by 3. I get a, 3a plus 3b plus 7 equals 0. When I move the 7 across, I get minus 7, and so we get 3a plus 3b and a minus 7. Now I can add those two equations together. The a's drop out. I get 7 is equal to a negative 7b, or b is equal to negative 1. And then if I plug that in here, well, actually, I'm going to plug it in here, because then I can say that minus 7 equals 3a plus 3 times the negative 1. And the negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Go across here, it becomes positive 3. So I get a negative 4 is equal to 3a, or I get a is equal to negative 4 over 3. So now I have the value for b, and I have the value for a, and they're both negative. And I can plug that down back into here, and I have the equation I1 is a function of time is equal to a, which now is a minus 4 thirds, e to the minus 3t, and b is a minus 1, so minus e to the minus 10t, and the steady state current plus 7 over 3. I know I don't have a lot of room back down here, but here, finally, is the equation for current in our first mesh. What do we have left to do? We still need to find the current in the second mesh, and we still need to find the voltage across the resistor, all as a function of time. But at least, I think we got through a big chunk of this problem, and so we'll need another video to do the second part of this problem to find the other two items we were looking for. And that is how it's done. <laughs> Let's see if it's correct. Minus 4, minus... Hey, look at that. It's correct. <laughs>